Hi, welcome to another episode of Azure Unblogged. Today, I'm really excited to talk about AVS landing zones and some of the networking topologies that are available within it. So stay tuned. And I have two special guests here to talk about their experience. Um, Sabine, nice to have you on. Hi, Amy. Hi, Mahesh. How's it going? I'm Sabine Blair. I'm with the Customer uh, Global Architecture and Engineering Team, CAE. Say that really fast. Um, <laughs> and uh, what I do is I have a customer-facing uh, engineering role, so really helping customers with their designs and architectures, their end-to-end -end patterns, uh, using the VMware and Azure solution. That's great. And Mahesh? Yeah, thank you, Amy and Sabine. Uh, it's great to be with you. My name is Mahesh. Uh, I'm a cloud solution architect. Uh, I work with the global partners and then help them successful on the AWS engagements. Besides work, I do love my tea. So don't mind if I drink my tea during this presentation. All good. I love tea too. <laughs> <laughs> good. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk something about AWS. All right. Let's do it. Um, so being, so I'm assuming with networking, there's a bunch of building blocks. Um, what, from your perspective, are those building blocks? Sure. Um, well, first and foremost, it really comes down to what the customers are trying to do. Um, they're coming in with many different scenarios. They could be coming to AVS to uh, extend their on-premise data center, or they could be coming in to migrate workloads. But either way, uh, this solution really helps them to facilitate their hybrid cloud des uh, desires um, and really put together an end-to-end -end footprint. Um, and that's exactly what a landing zone is, depending on where you land, um, can really facilitate how your different architectures look. Um, one of the key components that you get is this Azure dedicated express route. So this is a 10 gig circuit that comes as soon as you spin up your AVS solution. Um, this is not an additional cost. This is not an additional thing you have to add from a third party vendor. This is something that you're getting directly from Azure. And that comes with a great benefit. So you get that 10 gig circuit, but unlike other vendors, we don't rate limit this. So within AVS itself, you have your ESXi host. Those ESXi hosts have four NICs two for management and two for workloads. And those workloads are going at uh, 25 gigabits per second each. So, you know, when you do some optimizations on the AVS side and on the express route side, you can get a much, you know, faster connection. Um, and then we also have NSXT, and this is something that a lot of our customers who are using VMware already are pretty familiar with. This is the management portal. So this is what's going to help them do their static and dynamic IP addressing of their workloads. This is where they do their DCP, their DNS, their segmentation for the different CIDR blocks that they're going to use for a different workloads, whether it be dev or on um, you know, production. So there's a lot of things. This is a very, very powerful, robust tool that we're really excited to have on the solution. Um, they also get the T0 and the T1 router. So again, that's something that's native to NSXT, where you basically have your workloads and they communicate with those T1 routers and then the communicates with a T0 router. So that T0 router sits right at the edge. That's the physical uplink. And then the tier one routers is what connects to the actual NICs for those workloads. So it's responsible for managing that east-west traffic between those workloads and software to find data centers. Okay. Um, from there, we have network virtual appliances. And this is interesting because this can be something that you use natively within NSXT, but this is something as a customer, you have the freedom to bring in as well, whether you have a license for one already on-prem or you wanna get a virtual appliance up and going in, um, um, in NSXT itself uh, in your software-defined data center, or if you wanna have this in Azure. So you'll see in some of the different diagrams we have later on that we have different flows for where you wanna have that traffic inspection occur, which is why you would use a network virtual appliance. Um, with that said, if you do use that network virtual appliance in Azure, um, you're gonna need a third party uh, device to do like a layer three to have some user defined routes. So that's where Azure Route Server comes into play. That's that appliance that's gonna allow you to have those user defined routes so you can really communicate and have that flow um, from your NVAs to wherever it is that you want to go and have that traffic inspection. Um, and then lastly, but not least, we also have the option for customers to use Azure Firewall. And this is something that we really help to make easy for customers, because right in the AVS portal, um, you could just say internet enabled and your workloads were able to communicate with the internet. But that's something that's kind of for POC because you will not be able to see that traffic and you will not be able to manage those firewall rules. So this is where Azure Firewall comes into play, right in the portal, you could deploy a secure VLAN hub, 
configure your rules, you know, port 80, port 443. And that route from AVS would take precedence to that Azure Secure Hub and then out to the internet where you get that nice, robust, stateful traffic inspection to help meet your security needs. So a lot of moving blocks here, a lot of things that we're excited to talk about. Yeah, that's great. Wow. So with so many components or building blocks, how does that look when it's like all put together for an, a customer? Yeah, you know, and that's that's a great question because that is the question. That's what a lot of customers are asking us. Where exactly do we see all these different things coming into place? And it really comes into place when, you know, we think about where is it that they're trying to connect to and where is it that they're trying to go? So for example, like say you have your workloads and you're in the software defined data center. How do you communicate to workload in another software-defined data center? Um, and now we have something under the hood called AnyConnect. And what AnyConnect does is that underneath the, you know, the hood, it's a nice full mesh, you know, point-to-point -point route leak within the AVS network itself. Um, and that has like a tunnel that will go between those software-defined data centers. Now, if you want to go outside of AVS, let's say to your Azure VNets, this is where, again, you're hitting that edge. You're going from your direct connect. You're hitting that Microsoft dedicated edge. Um, and from there, you're able to go to your Azure VNets, and you're also able to go to your on-prem. And the way you'd go to on-prem or a different co-location data center is that in between those circuits, they are paired with something called global reach. So global reach is an attachment that's at your end of your express route circuit. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you have your on-prem data center and you have your AVS. Your on-prem data center is going to get a direct connect. It could be from a vendor. It could be Azure Direct. But that's going to terminate within Azure um, at an edge. And then it's the same thing for your AVS solution. You're going to have a direct Azure dedicated circuit. It's going to hit the global reach. And then those two circuits can peer. So now you're riding the backbone. You're not going over the internet. You have like an Azure you know, back end to have that communication end to end. Um, some things that we also see as well, customers looking for that traffic inspection, they could mm -hmm. do so using the Azure firewall rule um, and that public IP option. So when you go to AVS and you select that public IP option, whether it be in the portal or through automation or you even connect to an existing you know, Azure VLAN, um, mm -hmm. you're going to get that Azure VLAN hub, you're going to get that firewall, you're going to get those stateful rules and policies allowing you to have that traffic inspection and you're gonna have that route that's gonna take precedence to your internet. So that Azure firewall is what's gonna advertise that quad zero to the internet. Okay. So different communication that you can even have even within Azure VNets, right? Because mm -hmm. customers are excited to use things that are Azure native as well. They might wanna start using like, you know, storage accounts and whatnot or Cosmos DB or Key Vault. Um, so mm -hmm. your Azure VNets can be configured in the hub and spoke topology or again, using that secure VLAN hub. Um, and this is where we really see customers looking to have those different things that they can do um, to connect securely. That's great. Wow. So um, speaking of like a network virtual appliance um, and we're talking about VMware, are there, if I'm currently using something on premises, like a, like a third party NVA, can I use that in AVS? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, and there's a different, you know, options and how you want to do that because it really depends on where you want that traffic inspection to occur. Um, and that can really dictate where you put that network virtual appliance. Uh, so say, for example, we see this is a really popular demand with customers because they may already have a network virtual appliance on premise, on premises. And if they do that, um, what they can do from there is just have that traffic inspection um, initiate from on-prem to their Azure VNets. Also, if they're in the software defined data center itself, they could use NSXT natively, but they also have the option to use a network virtual appliance that they just you know, spin up on a virtual machine or just spin up an appliance within the software defined data center itself. So they could do that traffic inspection between their workloads east-west, but they could also have that traffic inspection where we're saying is north-south, you know, mm -hmm. going out to those Azure VNets. Where we do see things get complicated is when they want to have that traffic inspection end-to-end -end from on-premise to your Azure VNets, to your AVS, so that whole, you know, solution. Mm -hmm. and what we see customers do there is, um, one, if they don't have like the global reach uh, available to them, they disable it. Um, and therefore that doesn't take precedence. So your precedence literally of your route is going to Azure, um, but you need to have your, traffic inspection happening on both sides. So you need traffic inspection coming into Azure, boom, network virtual appliance. Then you have AVS going into Azure, boom, network virtual appliance. And then how those nice. communicate with each other is now they need that 
layer three device, which would be the route servers. So oh, that would either set up like a VXLAN tunnel or eBGP, but both ways, you know, now you have that end-to-end -end traffic inspection. That's great. Wow. Okay. So I think Mahesh has the slides like showing us the connectivity um, to share mm -hmm. with us. And I have a question for you, Mahesh. Um, can I use my third-party NVA? It sounds like I can use my third-party NVA, but is there something at like I can use that's directly integrated in AVS? It looks like there's a lot of Azure tools that are already built. So is there anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, coming back to your question, can you use your favorite third-party NVA directly integrated with AVS? Absolutely, you can. So let's take a look at how that scenario would look like. So as you can see on the screen, you don't have any NVA running inside of an Azure Virtual Network. Mm -hmm. Instead, you will see that the your favorite third-party NVA is running inside of an uh, AVS SDBC here. And this is a great place to actually run uh, the NVA because then you can you know, sort of carry on your operational processes that you might have created around specific feature set of your NVA or you have plenty of policies that you might have created uh, based on your on-premise location and you want to carry forward those policies uh, into AVS as well. So yes, uh, absolutely, you can run your uh, NVA uh, directly integrated with, uh, the, uh, with the AVS SDTC. So let's take a look at some of the major uh, network flows and let's start with the connectivity with on-premise environment. So the connectivity with on-premise environment is again uh, established using Express Route Global Reach. So this is uh, the feature or uh, service that connects the AVS Express Route circuit with the Express Route circuit that you already may have, which connects your on-premise environment with Azure. So no change there. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's move into the, uh, the egress traffic now. And then again, the egress traffic would originate from the AVS guest VMs. So the traffic would originate from the guest VMs inside of an AVS SDDC. It will us through this NV. And this is where you can run those policies. You can inspect your traffic and then do all the things that you otherwise would have done from your on-premise environment. One traffic is the once the traffic is deemed to be good, then it traverses through the tier one and tier zero gateways and then reaches to the AVS Express route circuit. And from the express route circuit that is associated with EVS, it breaks out, out into the internet. Now, one thing to note here is that the scenario one, which Sabine, earlier, uh, Sabine covered earlier, mm -hmm. the scenario differs that instead of routing that traffic through an Azure firewall, which would have been integrated with virtual van, mm -hmm. the internet breakout happens directly from the EVS express route circuit. So that's that's the egress traffic, uh, Amy, that you can sort of, you know, take a look at when okay. using your third party NVA. Now, the other two important uh, sort of traffic flows are let's talk about the ingress traffic and let's mm -hmm. first begin with the non HTTP or HTTPS traffic. So this traffic would originate from Internet and it the Azure firewall, which is integrated with the Azure virtual van mm -hmm. from there. The traffic would flow on to the AVS Express Route circuit and then over uh, to the tier zero and tier one gateway. And it will hit this third party NV once again. And again, you have an opportunity where you can inspect the traffic. If you know uh, you want to do any processing, you can do that. And then if everything is all right, then it will hit those backend VMs uh, for you know the final delivery. So that's the ingress traffic on, on HTTP and HTTPS uh, uh, protocol for you in. Uh, mm -hmm. That leaves the last important traffic flow, which is the traffic flow around or on the HTTP or HTTPS ports. Now, just like in the previous uh, network flow, the traffic would originate out in the internet somewhere. And here uh, it would terminate on an application gateway. Now, application gateway is the service that provides the services like WAF or SSL termination. And once that is done, then the traffic is routed over an express route connection back into the AWS express route circuit. And from here, it takes its usual path through the T0 gateway, then back to T1 inside your NVA, 
and a backend VM that might be serving that request. So overall, this is how that scenario would look like, Amy, where you can run your NVA directly mm -hmm. integrated with the AWS uh, SDDC. Wow, I mean, that's great. And I like all your drawings of the paths that helps um, visualize the network traffic. Um, yeah, I hope so, it was useful. Oh yeah, definitely. And then, it, so if I wanna inspect all like internet bound traffic from AVS, but I wanna do it on premises, can I, can I do that instead? Absolutely. I mean, uh, this is exactly, you know, what this scenario depicts. So, you know, so far we have looked at the NVA placements in multiple places. So let's sort of compare, uh, you know, those scenarios with this. So just like in the previous case, uh, as you would see here, there are no NVAs running inside of Azure Virtual Network. There is no virtual van or there are no NVAs running inside of an AVS. Instead, you would notice that your NVA is now running from an on-premise location. The one thing that we'll have to note here is you will have to ensure that the Quad Zero route is advertised over to Azure. Now, this can be done uh, over an express route circuit that you already might have. So this is the only thing that you'll have to ensure, Amy, that you do before you, uh, you know, take this scenario or before you make the scenario operational. Now, just like in the previous uh, uh, sort of scenarios, let's take a look at some of the important network flows and then let's begin uh, with, uh, once again, the on-premise connectivity. Sure. So just like in the previous scenario, the on-premise connectivity is established using Express Route Global Reach. This is the same uh, service that connects the AVS Express Route circuit with your existing on-premise Express Route circuit. So no change there. Yeah. Now let's move on to the egress traffic, Amy. And once again, um, for the egress traffic, the uh, the origin would be an AVS uh, SDDC VM. So the traffic would originate from that VM. It will pass to the tier one, tier zero gateways, and then hit the uh, AVS uh, Express Route circuit. From here, it traverses over the Express Route global reach and uh, to the on-premise Express Route circuit and eventually reaches the NVA that is running from the on-premise location. And from here, it will break out into the internet. Now, the reason why this happens is that quad zero route that I earlier talked about. Mm -hmm. Because you are publishing that quad zero route from your on-premise location into Azure, that same route will be honored by AVS. And that's how basically AVS knows that it has to route all the traffic to your on-premise NVA for internet breakout from that location. Does that make sense, Amy? Yeah, it's the default route. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, let's move on to the ingress traffic now. And then let's once again begin with the uh, the ingress traffic on, let's say the non-HTTP or HTTPS ports. And this would typically, or protocols, uh, this would typically include traffic on, uh, let's say RDP, uh, or, uh, you know, the TCP ports. Mm -hmm. So here the traffic would again originate from internet and mm -hmm. it would hit your NVA running from your on-premise location. From there, it will take its usual path uh, to the on-premises express route circuit over uh, the global reach onto the AVS express route circuit. And from here, back to AVS through the T0 and tier one gateway. So no chain there. So this is how the, let's say non-HTTP or non-HTTPS traffic would be handled. That leaves us uh, the last network flow, which is basically talking about the ingress traffic on HTTP or HTTPS uh, protocol. And just like in the previous mode, the traffic would originate somewhere in the internet. Now, instead of routing it to firewall, we would recommend that you route it over application gateway because this is the service that, as I earlier talked about, Mm -hmm. provides you the protection against the common web attacks. It also provides SSL termination. So all the great options when it comes to processing your web traffic. So once the traffic arrives at the application gateway, then again, using an express route connection, it would go to the AVS express route. Uh, and then from AVS express route, it would go to the tier zero, tier one gateways and back to the backend VM that will actually serve that, uh, that web traffic for, for the users. Back to you, Amy. All right. Well, great. I mean, 
it was great to learn about these four scenarios that you both have seen. Um, what are some key takeaways? Obviously, networking and security are really important. So um, as part of an EVS landing zone, what, what would you say is like um, a key takeaway for someone listening today? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to throw oh, that in there, we're, we're not limited to these uh, four scenarios. You know, depending on the customer needs, there's plenty of scenarios. So these are really here to be prescriptive. So as long as customers really understand the building block, they know the different things that they'll be able to design. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. And coming back to your point, uh, Amy, so this is, I would say, you know, what our uh, audience uh, should sort of take away from this session. Mm -hmm. So remember that, you know, from the AVS perspective, the key components are Azure Virtual Van, Azure Firewall and Application Gateway. So these are some of the Azure native services which facilitate ingress as well as egress uh, traffic flows uh, from and to the AVS uh, SDTC. So pay attention to that. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, NVAs play a huge role uh, in the whole AVS networking. Uh, as you saw in those, some of the key scenarios, a NVAs can be put or deployed inside multiple locations. You can run them from the Azure Virtual Network or directly integrate with AVS SDTC, or if you want, you can run them from your on-premise locations as well. Uh, the other important thing to be aware of are the express route circuits. And as Sabine uh, earlier talked about, express route circuits are that glue which connects the on-premise site with the AVS SDTC through global reach. So that has to be uh, enabled in most of the scenarios. The final thing uh, to be aware of are the quad zero routes. Now, quad zero routes essentially determine how the internet breakout happens. Uh, and then specifically in some scenarios like virtual van, uh, those routes get propagated to your on-premise location. Now that means that you know the all the internet-bound traffic might have to be routed to Azure, and you may or you may not want that. So please pay special attention to the quad zero routes. If you looked uh, or you know as seen in the scenario four, uh, in some cases you would actually deliberately want to push or advertise the quad zero route from your on-premise location to Azure so that you can have the internet breakout from your uh, on-premises location. So pay uh, special attention to the quad zero routes. And a quick summary in scenario one that we discussed, we looked at Azure Virtual Van as the key service. In scenario two, we looked at NV, which was running from a Azure Virtual uh, Network along with an Azure Route Server. In scenario three, we looked at the NV, which was directly integrated with AVS. And finally, in scenario four, we looked at an NVA, which was running from an on-premise location. So that's a quick summary, I would say, Amy, uh, for mm -hmm. our audience. Oh, that was great. Um, yeah, I learned a lot. There's so much to take in. Um, and then do we have a final slide to share with like the architecture you reference? OK, great. So we have the AVS landing zone, reference architecture, implementation, and guidance. And I thank you, uh, Mahesh and Sabine, for joining me today and sharing your in-depth knowledge. This was great. Um, and for everyone watching, you can definitely get the slides from today and any uh, links below. And I just want to thank you again. Thanks for joining. Anytime. Thank you. For thank, you. Us. thank you, yeah. Mahesh. So goodbye. Have a good day. Me too. Thank you.